Let me return to where, what I was saying about what's special about the euro dollar market. These are banks, but the reserves that these banks hold are not, bank, are not reserves that are held at the Fed. They're reserves that are held at some New York bank, typically. Some bank that holds its reserves at the Fed. So they are, there's a discipline quality there, okay, that since you can't readily get access to reserves, you've got to be a little more careful than the American banks who can borrow in the Fed funds market, number one, and number two, if they can't, they can borrow at the Fed. You know? So the Fed will backstop them, that's the whole point. The, so these banks can't do that. Okay? Their backstop is the ECB or something, and that's no good. The ECB can't print dollars, so, so they have more of a discipline problem than the American banks, than, than onshore banks. Okay? Got that? And they respond to this by being a lot more careful about lining up their cash flows in time. A lot more careful than American banks. So that these deposits are typically deposits to a specific date. They're term deposits. And we say, you can, this is a, this is a, uh, you know, this is a, uh, maybe a one month deposit. Okay, and this loan is a six month loan. Okay, and these euro dollar deposits may be for, uh, for three months. Okay, but, it, but in every case, there's a cash flow on a particular date, a particular date. And the banks know these dates. They pay very close attention to these dates. And not only do they try to have matched book in terms of, I want to have as many dollar deposits, you know, $10 million, as I have dollar loans, $10 million. I want to make sure that they're to the same dates. Okay? Because having them to the same dates means when I need to make a payment, somebody needs to make a payment to me. Okay? So that I can just take that money and move it. Okay? Now, it's not always going to happen that people make payments when they say they're going to make payments. So you need reserves and you need all of that. You know, but you can try. You can try and you can line these things up in time. And this is, this is the motivation for understanding a lot of what this chapter is about, these things about forward rate agreements and then foreign exchange agreements and things like that, that, the, that their attempts to line up the cash inflow and the cash outflow in time, okay? Not just the same aggregate amount of dollars, aggregate amount of dollars on both sides, but making sure that tomorrow these dollars are going to come in and these dollars are going to go out, the next day the next day, and we think about this months ahead of time. We look at each of these instruments. We know it. We can keep track of it. So you're managing the liquidity. And you're managing liquidity using some of these things called forward rate agreements. Forward rate agreement, which is pronounced FRA. Stigum talks about this, and if you talk to anybody in the markets about this, they'll say, oh, well, what this is, is you're promising to pay to another bank the difference between LIBOR and some fixed rate that you determine now, the forward rate, okay, at some future date. So three months from now, if LIBOR is higher than this number, you pay me. If it's lower than this number, I pay you. And that's what a forward rate agreement, so it's a derivative. Okay, it's a bet on what's going to happen to LIBOR relative to F. Okay. But to, to explain it that way, that is what it is. That's fine. Okay. That's all true. Okay. But it doesn't really help us understand the mechanics. It doesn't help us link it to banking. What's it doing for us in banking? It sounds like it's about speculation on what's going to happen to LIBOR. And you have one view and I have another view. Okay. You can use them for that. Okay. But I don't think that's why they exist. Okay? They exist to help banks line up their payments in time. And to see that, we need to understand the implicit balance sheet entries that are lying behind a FRA. So let me start with that. Okay? Let's think about two banks. Bank X, 
and bank Y. Okay. This one's going to be the forward borrower. This one's going to be the forward lender. So they're just like over, over there. They're trying to arrange cash flows, but they're trying to arrange them ahead of time in the future. <coughs> Bank X, let's say, um, anticipates that two months from now, it will be making a loan for a three-month term, two months from now. So it knows that it wants money to fund that now. It wants to arrange the funding for that now. That's a cash outflow. When you make a loan, they could just withdraw that and take it away. So you want to make sure you have funding for that now. This is quite typical. You talk to your corporate customers and you say, what are your anticipated cash needs and so forth. And you might even sign an agreement on what you're going to lend it to them, what rate you're going to lend it to them two months from now. So they know this is happening, but they, they, they're not quite sure they need to line up some funding. On the other hand, Bank Y, let's say, just to make it all work, okay, is in exactly the opposite position. Okay? They know they're going to get a deposit, okay, flow, inflow, two, two months from now, and they want to make sure they lock in some, something to use it for, you know, some, some, so, some use of funds that pays well. Okay? How can they do this? just with balance sheet entries. Here's how. Suppose that they just swap IOUs. All banking is a swap of IOUs. So even if it looks like a complicated little derivative, okay, it's a swap of IOUs. Okay. How, in what sense is this a swap of IOUs? Suppose that Bank X made a two-month deposit in Bank Y. of a million dollars or something. Okay? And Bank Y made a five month deposit in Bank X. For a million dollars. Okay? You can see that neither one of them needs to actually pay anything to anybody now at all, because it's a swap of IOUs. I lent you a million dollars, you lent me a million dollars. Okay, and that's it. There is a difference, however, in when these loans get paid back. Okay? So nothing happens at time zero. Right? No cash flows happen at time zero. We're, we've just swapped IOUs for different terms. Okay? But at time two months, okay, this deposit matures. Okay? Remember, I told you, that in the euro dollar market, these deposits are to particular terms. So there's a particular day at which this deposit matures. And when this matures, Bank Y has to make a payment. It's a liability. It has to make a payment to Bank X. Um, and that's good because Bank X needs to make this loan. Okay? So Bank X makes this loan for three months using the funds that are coming from Bank Y. And where's the funds coming from for Bank Y? This matures. There was this, uh, there was this deposit that was coming in, deposit inflow. So the deposit inflow from outside is replacing this two-month deposit, okay? And the deposit outflow for the actual loan is replacing that at maturity, right? Now, and so th th this is how, so, so I've shown you mechanically how by swapping IOUs now, you can lock in the source of funds in time, okay? That there's gonna be a flow of funds from bank Y to bank X two months from now, okay? You can lock that in, the timing. And you can do these to any dates you know, any dates at all. So you can make this very, very sophisticated. There are euro dollar deposits to any date you want. Okay, so you can really fine tune this. Just with balance sheet entries, you can create that kind of, you can manipulate the timing of the cash inflows and cash outflows. So now the question is, um, well, but uh, what is the rate of interest on this? And I'm gonna say, 
let us say they make, since there was no cash changing hands for the first two months, okay, what's really happening is, uh, let's say that they had the same interest rate. And I'm calling that F for forward. So what you're winding up doing is funding this three-month loan for F percent. Okay? And F, you, you, this is an agreement between the two banks. Okay? And I'm going to say where F comes from in a minute. But that what Bank X is doing is funding this three-month loan for this rate of interest. So it's locking in a funding rate. And what Bank Y is doing is locking in a, an investment rate, okay, that it, it, the deposits are coming in and it knows it's going to be able to invest them at F percent, even if the three-month LIBOR rate is a lot lower than that by that time. It's locked it in beforehand, okay. It has, it has an investment and so it's hoping to make a profit on that. 